Brother Malcolm said, education is the passport to the future. It's the real talk. It's the real talk. Yo, yo, it's that real talk. An in-depth conversation. Breaking down how to pass effects of situations. P. Brown, something critical for your conscience. Not that daily nonsense, not swayed by the sponsors. Yeah, I'm black, but my perspective not biased. One God, one race, with a message that's timeless. Online with the message for the mass. It's time to unify or stay divided and distracted. Brother Malcolm said, education is the passport to the future. What's good, my brothers and sisters? I'm Percy Brown Jr. with Real Talk, coming at you all the way live. In about five minutes, that is, so let's get down to the biz. And I know last week I was talking about black economics and black empowerment, and I'm staying with that this week, my brothers and sisters, and I'm staying with hoes, 444 with Legacy. Yeah, I'm talking about the song Legacy, where he's talking about black excellency, let them see, and not that Molly, like those brothers Future and Migos are talking about. So in this song, Jay-Z is expressing the need for us to take our dollars and start spreading it across the families from one generation to the next. But for me, his most powerful point came in the song when he said, start a society within a society, right? Now that's black excellency, baby, let them see. And what did whole mean by that? But we have to ask the question, is a society within society possible for black Americans? And I'm here to tell you, of course it is. Because we were forced to live that way because white Americans made every point to stay away from us via Jim Crow or through Northern de facto segregation. But was this forced way of life oppressive? And were black Americans able to create a strong black society within an oppressive white society? And yes, things were oppressive. But what was taking place because of those oppressive and segregated conditions? And I want to hit you with Black Wall Street or Greenwood, Oklahoma. There were several cities across the nation that were predominantly black, that were thriving and prosperous. But I'm focusing on Black Wall Street, right? Greenwood, Oklahoma or Tulsa, Oklahoma. So the oil boom of the early 1900s had all kind of folks from across the country rushing to Oklahoma, right, to take advantage of great paying jobs, and that included blacks. And despite hostile segregation in Tulsa and Greenwood, blacks in the area created business opportunities by black and for black because their dollar was no good in white America's institutions. Blacks in Greenwood, Oklahoma created an impressive community that included banks, hotels, Cafes, they made their own clothes, had movie theaters, and nice homes that outrivaled their white counterparts in Tulsa. But unfortunately, the events of May 31st through June 1st, 1921, decimated Black Wall Street by way of white inflicted terrorism because a white woman accused a young black man of attempted sexual assault. More than 300 blacks were killed. 9,000 blacks left homeless and 40 square blocks of community totally looted and burned by a white mob. Despite the horror inflicted by their white counterparts, Black Wall Street was slowly but surely bringing itself back to life but died shortly thereafter because of the integration of public places, restaurants, and so forth. So when we think about integration versus segregation in regards to economic empowerment, White supremacy reigned the day because it allowed for the integration of black American dollars while the institutions rejected the black consumer by not hiring us, nor banks providing us loans for entrepreneurship opportunities. White communities kept us away through de facto segregation practices and housing, but most importantly, we sent our babies into an educational system that was not designed for us nor care for us. And this is the hardcore truth because integrating black children into white schools forced black schools to close and black teachers were not hired in the white schools where their children now attended. And maybe I'll focus on Brown next week to give you more of the truth in terms of what really played out in that court case and what black people really expected the Supreme Court to bring about. It wasn't what we have today. And education is the foundation to any possibility and opportunity 
for prosperity and for us to think about black economics and black empowerment, right? But it goes back to thinking generational, going back to Hove's legacy, right? Legacy, 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 legacy. And maybe one day we will be free. We gotta start doing things differently, my brothers and sisters. That's all I got for you this week. Black Wall Street should give you some hope, some place and space for optimism, because I know it's other brothers and sisters out there on the same level of consciousness, but it's time for us to continue pushing that direction and hopefully we come together one day sooner than later. So until then, peace out and Godspeed to the change we want to see. Real Talk is a subsidiary of Critical Consciousness, LLC, a company that helps school systems and companies innovate with a focus on diversity and inclusion. Real Talk is brought to you in part by Madison 365, executive producer of Real Talk, Terrence Jackson, CEO of Up Next Marketing Incorporated. Intro song performed by Keon Andre of Cadence Music Group and produced by Greg Dolby of Unidec Media Group. Follow Percy Brown at www.percybrown.org or on Facebook and Twitter at Percy Brown Jr.